Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 13 of my modded Factorio playthrough. On this episode, we're going to set up smelting using angels, and there's quite a bit to talk about, so let's get into it. Enjoy. So to do so requires metallurgy, which unlocks blast furnace, induction furnace, and casting machine. They all kind of require the same things. Lots of stone bricks, steel, and circuit boards, and pipes, gears, every which thing <laughs> is needed. Um, well, cool nanobots are done. I kind of want this to go down so we can automatically create some of the steel components we need. I don't know if we really need to bust the steel, but we can produce the steel components just right here. Just to get it taken care of. Okay, oops, this needs to go all the way down. So, first things first, make those metallurgy. The blast furnaces are responsible for turning the ore into ingots. And then the induction furnaces and casting machines take those ingots and turn them into plates or other products. You can see these nanobots and repair packs are really taking up the resources. We might not have the opportunity to stress test this before we're going to start needing steel, so... We'll just get it going now. Now we're definitely not going to have <laughs> uh, any iron for a long time. Well, seems to be working. It's a pretty slow process. Now that we have metallurgy, we can research advanced iron and advanced copper smelting. So what it does is it takes uh, one to one ratio, so 24 iron ore goes in and then 24 iron ingots come out. And that's out of a blast furnace, which requires fuel, but it's one building that requires fuel rather than all these individual furnaces. So it's much more efficient for your coal. And then you take those ingots and you have to turn them into uh, molten iron, which is done electrically in an induction furnace, and then that molten iron turns into casting machines. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So just doing this alone is going to increase our production from, uh, well, we're doing this melting the inefficient way. So that's going to increase output from like 55% to 100%. So it's going to be a huge increase just doing this without even doubling this up which I think we're going to need to, but it kind of depends on the output. So let's get that researched and then we can do hell mod to see exactly what kind of output we'd get with this. All right, iron is done. We're gonna need to do copper as well, since we're still gonna be producing iron and copper at the same time. Uh, now the recipes can be different, they're not all the same where they just work like this. But as far as iron and copper do, they, they do work the same, so there's no special research required. But we can check out Helmod now to see uh, how this would change. So you kind of want to do these in separate blocks, and the more complicated your factory gets, the more separated you want the blocks to be. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is uh, get rid of this. And now we're going to turn that directly into ingots. So you see it requires half of a blast furnace where three iron ores go in and three iron ingots come out. And then we can take those ingots and then turn them into molten iron using the induction furnace, which it requires one of. And it's three becomes 30. And then we can turn those into iron plates, which 30 becomes three. So it starts at three, ends at three. And it's three, so one to three. So really, if we double this up, double up our output, 
this would be a perfect ratio. So we have two sorting facilities right now. If we had four of them instead, our output would be uh, six iron and three copper. which would then produce our six iron per second, turning into six plate per second, and a one to two to six. Now, something that's also interesting to note is that we're gonna need to process copper as well. So the recipe for doing stereotype is the inverse. Of this, so instead of getting six iron and three copper, we'll get six copper and three iron. Now, right now, we kind of don't want to bother with that because we have copper overload. But if we did, we would have a total of nine of each. And if we did that, we would actually need more than this. We would need one and a half blast furnaces and more induction furnaces and whatnot. But that would require. Uh, nine items per second is more than our 7.5 of our standard belts. So it's kind of like overkill. Six ought to be plenty. And uh, at any given time, we're probably only going to be either running one or the other, not both at the same time. So we're probably not going to have that much of a problem. But it's just something to keep in mind that it's not going to be a perfect ratio if both machines are running at the same time. So we're going to have four ore sorters and four crushers so in other words this upper half is going to be doubled so we're going to have two of those and then underneath it we're going to have two blast furnaces to turn them into ingots um, later in the game you want this these blast furnaces to be somewhere else entirely because the more complicated recipes require more steps and it'll be difficult to have it all uh, placed in this small spot. But for now, it's just the blast furnace, so it's easy enough just to place them under here. So we're going to have the two ores come out like this. It's probably going to be on one belt. And then we're going to have a blast furnace on each side picking up the required ores and turning them into ingots. And then those two sets of ingots, they will be automatically sorted, the copper and the iron, will go down to the uh, induction furnaces to turn them into plates. Those will also be somewhere else, but they'll be a nice convenient ratio here. So we have a bit of a shopping list to collect. We need to double this. And look at all these things we got here. So before we remove all this and remove our ability to make more resources, Let's make sure we have all the resources to begin with. Actually, and we could probably save a little bit of time by going backwards. By figuring out where we want the induction furnaces to go first. So we can get rid of that. And then build this. sort them appropriately. So we need uh, two to six, and we're going to essentially want one for each uh, copper and iron, so we need four induction and twelve casting machines. So we need lots and lots of steel. So four induction. One, two, three, four. And just like that, we're out of steel. Let's see. We can make this go a little faster by just cutting that off. Letting all the output go through here. So we finally got the 4 to 12 ratio of what we need here. So as far as where this happens, this is where the plates are going to come out. We don't really want it to happen here. 
And I think I kind of want to move this somewhere else because that's really close to the Bob Monium. And it's going to need to be twice as big. So I'm thinking it's going to happen out here somewhere. So if that's the case, we can potentially process the iron, like down here maybe. So, so it's going to be kind of far away. Is that our only rubite? Ooh, that kind of is the only rubite. That's problematic. Hmm. But let's do it from down here. So what's going to look like is we're going to have so we're kind of going backwards here. But we have the casting machines making the iron plates. They've got inputs on three sides, so uh, they are well connected. But we can put the pipe in the center to supply the molten iron. And then we can put these two machines. Uh, does it really matter? Uh, let's see. Well, belt's output is going to come up here and then combine, and there's going to be the output. Let's see, we can put these in the center. We can make it slightly smaller. Moving them up a bit. Tell it to make molten iron. There we go. Now as far as uh, number of inserters. It looks like we need five inserters across these two machines. So three for each. And then one inserter for every casting machine. Which makes sense, it's a one-on-one -on -one ratio, so... Uh, about five go in, and then about five come out. It's just good practice to use both sides of the belt, even if you don't really need to. And then the input will come in through the side. Though I'm still not terribly confident where this setup should actually go. See, I'm probably going to move the electric steam engines here. That would give more room to move, move things around. So that's probably what I'll do. But anyway, this recipe is complete. It's a blueprint. So we can save it. Hmm. This is kind of in the way. Maybe that should get moved too put it over there. Yeah. You can build the same thing again for copper. We could squish it right up against here. But sometimes it's nice to leave a little gap just so you can walk by. Because if it was like this, we wouldn't be able to walk by it at all. But also a gap for um, extra belts that might need to go in there. Because belts go places in factories sometimes. So you never really know. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Although these are actually upside down. Oops. And running out of robots. This is why we produced, put them on the factory. Oh, look at that. Finally catching up with the steel. And let's get a stack of it. And <laughs> then it's going to be trying to play catch up again. And that's good. 
the belts are probably going to come in from the other direction. Like that, but... Okay. Now we need to do some processing. Uh, we might not have to move this for the first step. Let's grab that. Make it as small as we can get away with. Don't need these returns, so something like this seems pretty good. Uh, let's just move this now. Basically, we need to have two poles right there. Where power from this one goes to that pole. And then it doesn't go between these poles. Okay, gotta pay attention. These are should be two separate networks. This one, yes. Yeah, see, this wire goes left to right, so this is the main uh, electrical grid, and then this one right here, the up and down, is just the inserters and the burner turbine. The important thing to make sure to do it right is that the burner turbine is not on the main network; it's on its own thing. It's going to be annoying dealing with that water over there, but... That is correct. We need four of these. Although, we kind of need to do it half and half. Although, once we get the necessary resources to build this, we should be okay, so. Now for this quantity of machines, we'll need one blast furnace. For iron, and a half of a blast furnace for the copper. Now this can actually be done somewhere else, but at the moment I don't think our setup is complicated enough to warrant that. So iron comes in through here, copper goes in through there, and then the bypass copper needs to come here, and bypass iron needs to come in through there, which is going to be a little more messy. to move this. It needs to be a couple of notches up and just have to deal with that water. All right, so blast furnace. Five goes in and five goes out. It's a pretty fast machine. So one, two, three, four, five. belts already. Actually, do we even need to do the sorting at all? What kind of output's going to be? Uh, yeah. Because that's actually more than one belt's worth of resources, so they kind of need to be either sorted 
like this or placed on a yellow belt. We can't make yellow belts yet, so it does have to be this way. For now. So the coal can kind of uh, come in through the bottom here. Actually, that can stay normal. That will supply the coal. Okay, we're getting pretty close. Let's see. Can I make a recipe with ghosts? Oh, cool. So we kind of need to squeeze this up as far up there as we can get it. Let's see, we can make that work. How does that do for space? That gives us a, a little bit more. Just enough, I think. Okay, looking good. Let's get the fuel delivered. Basically need to have this completely set up and ready to go prior to disassembling that, because it's hard to predict exactly how many resources we're gonna need for a given setup. So it's better just to have the whole thing ready to go before you start disassembling perfectly working parts of your factory. Another thing to keep in mind is we're actually going to dramatically increase the number of bricks we're going to produce with this. Basically, we're going to produce twice as many. So we're going to have six bricks per second, or six uh, stones coming out per second, and we're going to produce three bricks, which is going to require uh, ten stone furnaces. So we need to double its size. Which this actually won't work anymore with this combined belt. We're going to need to have two separate belts. Okay. Bricks have been upgraded. Now we need to actually deliver the stone. Uh, so let's come in, in kind of over here. That works pretty well. We've got something like that. And this can kind of snake its way around and then go down. <laughs> kind of messy. This is going to take 12 sapphire per second. And it's 75% efficient, which is why we're getting our nine ore. So we need two belts. And we'll probably come in up through here. <laughs> Okay. That appears like it would work. Okay, the system looks like it's about ready to go. I think we just need to build the miners. And then it should be ready to fire it up. See, I kind of want to close this off at certain segments just so we can test it at full power. So how many miners? 24. Um, do we have access to minor twos? We do, but it requires the electronic circuit boards. So for now, uh, I think we're just gonna need to build as many as we can get away with. 24 in total. So for now, I think we can safely 
shut this process down. So we'll just, we'll just let this go through the paces and use up everything it's got. Okay, we got our 24 in there. Barely. We'll need to put all this through a balancer. Luckily, I know the recipe for a 2 to 2 balancer. There we go. Okay. This is probably going to nuke the electrical grid. Right, we'll let this fill up to stress test it. Okay. Let's watch the magic happen. Very slowly at first. speed, which it should be, and this is running at about 50% speed. Looking good. Let's see, we have almost a full belt of stone. Not quite a full belt. How's electricity? Holding. Probably won't once we start uh, assembling things with all that again. I mean, this will be fine. It's just double of what it was before, so it'll keep up. Let's get this filled up, and then we can continue to stress test it. That's what you would expect, where one side or the other is going to get filled up based on which clogs first. Until we kind of have a circuit network to kind of handle that. Uh, it's going to kind of look like that. But even with circuit networks, like something's always going to be clogged. Okay, so now the ingots are going to come in and get turned into plates. And yeah, this one's going to be at 100% and this one's going to be at 50%. Yep, and power is getting reduced. We can fix that. Hopefully, if we've got the resources. We do. One, two, three, four. And eight of those. Let's see. Let's set this up to operate on both sides. These wires. Like this. Okay, see, we kind of messed it up a bit, so the burner is now on both sides. The uh, turbine generator there. sides. Let's see here. There we go. Everything is connected again. And this continues because each one of these can hold 200 plates. So they're a very large uh, repository or a buffer. And with that, we can connect it back to the bus. 
We should not have throughput issues anymore, at least for a little while. We should be able to just connect everything and let the system run itself. So much more plates this time around. You can see how this has no problem at all maxing out a uh, gray belt here, because six inserters to one belt, so even though this can't quite put out 7.5 items a second, it can at least max it out as long as there's a buffer in these assembling machines here. Let's see, we don't quite have a compressed belt here. bricks just fine. Now we have lots of bricks left over, so might as well place them all. Uh, we can turn off the copper sink for now. because so We have a fairly large buffer system here. Where essentially we can buffer up all of these chests and then buffer up all of those. So we can probably just wait until these chests get full before Worrying about copper overload now. There's a little more we can do. We can produce the steel intermediates. Uh, steel bearings, ball bearings, you don't really make that many of them, so I'm fine with making those manually. However, uh, we do do uh, steel gear wheels quite a bit, so we should probably make some of those. I think we're going to need two of these inserters for these gears. Maybe. Nope. Just the one. Okay. Looking pretty good. We have quite a bit of output now, so we can continue expanding the factory. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.